For as long as I can remember, I've been a fan of horror, specifically horror movies and games. There's a lot you can do with the medium, and there's lots of games to enjoy. For me though, there's always been one subset of games that I think has the highest potential for growth, the fan game. Fan games that take on a more horror-centric theme usually follow a formula. The most famous, or infamous at this point, is the .exe formula. This was a term popularized in the video game creepypasta community from a very specific story. Sonic.exe was the very first story to popularize this subset of gaming creepypasta, one that still sees stories and games being created today. There's actually a recent entry in the Sonic.exe world that we're going to be exploring today, but first we need to look a little at how the genre progressed from its humble beginnings. Let's check out Sonic.exe. What more is there really to say about Sonic.exe? The character is a classic in the world of both creepypastas and the Sonic fandom. I guess we can do a general overview, as the original story is important for where this video is going. Sonic.exe was a creepypasta that was posted on the internet in 2011, and immediately was a hit with fans of the creepypasta community, as well as the Sonic community. A year later, the fan game version was released to similar interest. PewDiePie and many other Let's Players would play the game, and this is when the growth really began. That original story, though, would be moved to the Trollpasta wiki for how poorly written it was and for the amount of cliches it had. Ever since, Sonic.exe has been a staple of the Sonic community. Of course, his appearance in the community is pretty divisive, and this all leads to that game that I mentioned before. This is Sonic.exe, and it's pretty close to how the original Creepypasta was told. This in a way I think holds back what it could do with the character. It's at least a cool visual representation of the Creepypasta. The game opens with the usual Sonic screen before flashing to the creepy version. This includes a bloody river and Sonic's similar bloody face. This version doesn't have the Sega 666 in the corner, but that's not really that important. The title screen gives you three characters to choose from. You have to start with Tails, as the other two aren't selectable. The game plays how an EXE game usually does. This is to say that you move from left to right and see what creepy things happen. As Tails traverses the level, more and more things start to happen. First you'll see ruined plants and then dead animals. Finally you'll see Sonic, but his eyes are black voids and there's blood coming from them. Tails is then chased by Sonic.exe, and is eventually caught. The next level you'll be playing as Knuckles. The same thing happens, except there's no real buildup for Knuckles. He just runs into Sonic and has to try and catch him. Sonic can't be caught, but Knuckles eventually is. The last level is Robotnik, and I actually really like his idle animation. He just stares at the player with a nervous sweat building on the side of his face. This level is largely the same, with Robotnik running to the right. Once all of the characters are caught, Sonic then taunts the player, and pulls their name from the computer. This is what that looks like. Sonic then proudly claims that he is God. This ending screen scared me a lot when I first read this story and played this game, but kind of has lost its effect over time. Though, the second screen that follows with the Japanese text on the screen is still pretty eerie, and definitely works at creating an atmosphere. Sonic EXE is the truest game to follow the EXE formula. This game was one that I'd played a dozen times for different reasons throughout the years, but it just doesn't quite hold up. It's still creepy in a dark room when you're home alone and wearing headphones. Without that perfect atmosphere, it just doesn't work. The nostalgic side of me still likes it, but there's better alternatives available now. With how popular Sonic.exe was, it was just a matter of time before a sequel would follow. This sequel wasn't official, but now we have Sally.exe. This game follows pretty much exactly what the original did, but with new characters. The game starts the way the creepypasta does, with a scene from the Sonic cartoon. The scene where Sonic and Sally are about to kiss, which glitches out before thrusting us into the game. You have to play as three new characters this time, starting with Amy. Amy follows Sonic through a ring, and then is placed in a bonus room. Once you exit the bonus room, she is immediately killed by Sonic.exe. An edit of her will sit on the side of the screen as the next character is loaded up for us to play. This time, it's Cream. Cream runs down a long level until hitting a power-up, the speed-up boots. She gets too many of them and then crashes into a spike wall and explodes into Viscera. The screen cuts back, and now we have to play as our last character. This time, it's Sally. Sally doesn't get to do much as she's surrounded by the characters that had died before her. Sonic lords above her as the walls of her surroundings start to cave in on her. There's no escape and no chance of survival. 
A black screen takes us back to that cartoon scene from before. It cuts just as the two meet, with Sonic's face turning into EXE. A loud scream and Sally's face is shown up close, with stitching going through her eyes. This is a pretty iconic scene in the world of creepypastas, and this whole ending of the game is exactly like what happens in the creepypasta. Sally.exe is a direct sequel to the game, and the creepypasta is written just as poorly, which is interesting since it was written by someone else entirely. There would be an official sequel to Sonic.exe called Sonic.exe Round 2, but that one was less fun and more serious. It honestly holds up even worse than the first story. There would be a rewrite of Sonic.exe, but that wasn't really all that good either. Sally Exe was more focused on the Sonic cartoon, but really wanted to be just like Sonic. I could go over all the weird choices made in Sally.exe, but I will spare you the time. As far as the game is concerned, this one is pretty basic. You don't get much control over anything, and instead just watch three characters die and join the others. The story of the game isn't really adding anything to the lore of Sonic.exe. It does follow the creepypasta pretty closely, which might also be its downfall. I have less of a nostalgic attachment to this one, but it's pretty much just an extension of the first game. Both are bad and together aren't much better. Even so, Sonic.exe was a phenomenon that only hits a community once. Its take on a darker, edgier Sonic had built an entire community around its concept. One that can be seen as separate from the normal Sonic fandom. There was a group that existed that wanted more out of the EXE concept. That's where Sonic.exe One More Time comes in. This is another EXE game, but something about it is just so vastly different. The presentation here is far superior to the other games I've talked about thus far. The game starts similarly to the story of Sonic.exe. When you load the game, you see the back of EXE before he turns and the words One More Time appear at the top of the screen. The game then shuts down and you're required to restart it. The game starts up and you can feel the level of quality here is much higher immediately. Sonic's animations are more fluid and disturbing. Sonic appears with no eyes and smiles at the player. You then load into the usual character select screen. Picking Tails, you'll see a hand grab the fox and carry him away. This leads directly into the level. Sonic EXE will start to talk to you, saying things like, hello again, with his face appearing on the screen. Sonic EXE feels more like a character here something I've felt missing from the other games. Also, some of the imagery of the entities shown here is downright terrifying. This is Sonic as he taunts you. His face is just a mouth now, a mouth filled with razor sharp teeth and leaking some black liquid. A light is placed just around Tails and the expression he wears is now that of worry or terror. Tails will need to race past the dead animals just like before until running into EXE. Sonic EXE's face will take up the screen again, and he will continue to taunt you. As Tails runs, you can feel the presence of EXE chasing close behind. The screen will flash with EXE in different positions, before he eventually just runs at Tails. Catching him, he disappears as Tails falls to the ground crying and shaking. When he reappears, he grabs Tails, lifts him up, and tears his body from his head. EXE then turns his head completely around, exorcist style, and stares at the player. This is the last screen you see, with another taunt from EXE. This whole game takes the concept of Sonic.exe to another level. Everything is more visceral, more gory, more disturbing. This is what Sonic.exe could have always been. The game continues and now it's time to play as Knuckles. Knuckles runs into Sonic. Same as before. Only this time, the fight is over much quicker. Knuckles falls to the ground exhausted, and EXE does something different. In a show of body horror, Sonic's stomach opens up and another arm pops out. It grabs Knuckles by the throat and squeezes until his head pops off. And once again, he turns to stare at the player. The final stage is Robotnik again. His face shows the fear that he feels as he tries to leave his own base. The screens behind him show the now deceased Tails and Knuckles. You can also see all of his weapons in the background. As you leave the first area, this Sonic face appears on screen. This looks like a predator almost, which I guess fits with what Sonic.exe is. It is another show of body horror, and a pretty effective one. Something I found really interesting is the idle animation of Robotnik. If you sit still for a while, he'll slowly turn his head and look behind him. There's a brief period where he stares forward and looks more terrified than any of the other characters. 
As you progress through Robotnik's level, you'll see it start to change. Sonic's arms will start to pop up in the foregrounds. Two ghostly looking Sonics will be following closely and there's something in the background. There, in the background is a terrifying looking Sonic. His eyes are black voids, his mouth is the same. He appears to be laughing as you try to run away. The size of this Sonic is also something to note. Robotnik, just like the others, will be caught and Sonic will stab him with what looks like a bone. He'll stare at the camera and in turn the player. His voidless mouth and eyes a horrid sight to behold. The ending screen is one that I'm sure you've seen before. Sonic appears to be laughing and then it happens. The I am God message pops up with the ghoulish Sonic staring at the screen. A bunch of text boxes pop up all over with the same message. I am God is repeated in each one. This feels like the true potential of the Sonic.exe formula being realized. The animations, body horror, even the presentation of the levels is all better here. This version of EXE is honestly scarier than any other I've seen so far. It's the real fear we all felt when this story was first being shared, and it was finally to the level we all thought of in our nightmares. This game does a lot with the simple premise of the .exe game. It takes it to the next level, and throws in some very smooth animations as well as a unique level design. The game is essentially the same, as you just walk from left to right until something happens. This one just gives you more to look at along the way. Even with how well this game is made, it's still an EXE game at its core. It does what every other EXE game does. What if you took the concept, added in a story, and threw in a little bit of other horror genres? There's a Sonic.exe game that does so much with the basic premise. Rarely has a fan game done so much that it's creating its own fans outside of the usual fan base that the game originated. This game has done something that I think we haven't seen since the original Sonic.exe came out so many years ago. It's called Sonic Editable ROM, and it is a fan game that kind of took the internet by storm earlier this year. That's probably thanks to Markiplier who played it back in May. Even so, the game definitely has so many secrets and easter eggs waiting to be discovered. Sonic Editable ROM does something that immediately interests me. The description for the game says it is an unknown ROM hack of Sonic that was uploaded to the internet under many different names. The most common file name was Sonic Editable ROM and then asks if you want to try out this glitchy game. This section is super interesting. It sets up the premise as if you were about to experience your very own creepypasta. It feels very similar to the Mario creepypasta from many years ago. In Mario, the author of the story claimed to have downloaded a strange hack from a known Mario hacking website. Creepy and weird things then begin to happen in the game. This has a very similar feel, and even follows a typical gaming creepypasta setup. Let's talk about the game. The game starts with a warning screen about flashing lights, the usual for these kinds of games, but then follows up with saying that this game is best experienced in windowed mode. This is an odd statement, but one we will come back to later. After clicking to start the game, this shows up. This thing that looks like a twisted one-eyed Sonic is staring at you. This is immediately setting the tone for the rest of the game. You just know that everything you do is going to be under the watchful eye of this thing. Sonic Team presents, shows up, and then a message, die, is seen for a fraction of a second. The Sonic 1 game screen loads and this happens. This thing is all over the place already. 
It takes Sonic's place for a few frames before the game freezes with a message, quit right now before it's too late. This is not a normal ROM hack. Delete it immediately. Your time is running out. And the final message of run. The one-eyed Sonic is back and he looks terrifying and grotesque. A strange symbol adorns his abdomen. I'm not entirely sure of its meaning just yet. A loading screen with Green Hill Zone Act 1 appears and we're playing as Tails. The game uses the same graphics as the early Sonic games, specifically Sonic 2. The game plays out normally here, for the most part. If you were to lose all three of your lives here, the game will greet you with a jump scare and turn off. The Eye of the Deranged Sonic has some sort of symbol in it, and the text on screen will flash saying, giving up so soon, before it says, pathetic. Restarting the game, you need to finish the level as Tails. Simply get to the end of the stage, and you'll see this. It's the long-limbed version of Sonic from the intro, but he quickly turns into regular Sonic and runs in the opposite direction. If you try to continue to run to the right, then a weird-looking Sonic will knock you over, and then another Sonic will laugh at you. Both of these Sonics look very similar to the original Sonic.exe. They also both appear to have strange symbols on their abdomens. With the only option left to go left, we start backtracking through the level. Getting back to the top of the cliff, a strange message will appear on screen. This is that message. The game will then go dim, along with the music stopping. This is where the game progresses slightly differently based on which direction you go. A small scene of Tails cowering and then closing his eyes will play. If you go to the left, you get the message on screen from Sonic that says, meet me at the beginning. Continue left and you'll eventually be grabbed by Sonic. If you go to the right, then a timer will start to count down. The only thing you can do while it counts down is continue running to the right. It doesn't matter what you end up doing though, as you are still grabbed by Sonic either way. Each route gives you a different screen. The first says a legal instruction with an error code, while the latter just exits the game as Tails is grabbed. A scene with Knuckles will then play out. Let me show you. This message from Knuckles seems cryptic and very vague. From my own interpretation, Knuckles here is referring to the fans of Sonic.exe games, but I'll expand upon that later. You have to launch the game again, and this time a message says it's time to try something different. The sprites for Tails, Sonic, and Eggman appear on screen for a moment before shifting to different sprite work. The scene transitions to Ray running from something. We aren't really sure yet as all we can see is his running. Looking closely, you can see that the actual score time, rings, section has switched to a message. At first it says, stop Sonic please. A short scene of Sonic moving from the background of the world to the front plays out and the message changes again. Somebody help me. The message changes one last time. It reads, player help me. Going back to something I mentioned before about this feeling like a creepypasta, well not only does it feel like a creepypasta, but it treats us as an actual character in it. Ray is reaching out to us, asking us directly for help, and that means that he might not be the only one that knows we're playing. The scene ends with the demonic Sonic grabbing and pulling at Ray's eyes before transitioning again. This time we're in a whole new area and a whole new level, one we haven't seen before. Sonic stands at a cliff's edge and looks at the sunset before taking off. That evil Sonic appears for a split second in the bush and then disappears again. This new area has very calming music and a chill design. This will be the area where we can do some more exploring. 
The level has some caves, an underwater section, and plenty of verticality for holding many secrets. One that I found pretty early on, and one that I couldn't replicate for some reason, was in the underwater cave. I entered the cave with the bubble power up, and as I was going for the rings down there, this thing popped up. It looks like a very skinny, demonic version of Tails. It has no eyes, it doesn't seem to do anything. I tried to find this thing again in other playthroughs, but wasn't able to. Continue far enough into the game and you'll eventually run into a scene of Sonic falling. When the game loads back in, you'll see Sonic floating at the top of some water with the eyes of something looking on from the background. When you run back to that same section of level, the screen will shift into a scene of Sonic running from something. You have to run or it'll kill you and instantly turn off the game. Once you escape, Sonic can be seen with no eyes and floating in front of the other Sonic. He will talk directly to the player. This is where I'll be talking about the reason you need to play this game in windowed mode. At the top of the window, you'll see a picture of Sonic and some words. The game is actively talking to you through the browser title. The other Sonic says that it's building a family, but what it's really missing is you. It'll say that it needs you. It needs to see you, that you are all it wants. A pop-up will say that the access to your webcam was denied, just as the text saying, I want to see you pops up. The last message will say, I'm coming for you. This part with needing to see you and then the pop-up feels so surreal. It's not just that the game is communicating with us, but that we are an active part of the story. Our involvement is more important than what is happening to the characters even. The game then loads you back in as an eyeless Sonic. The game clearly wants you to go to the right which is pretty standard fare for EXE games, and Sonic games in general. But if you don't do that, instead decide to jump over to the boost pad and head left, this is what you'll see. The two Sonics from before can be seen for a split second before disappearing. The gray Sonic hits the blue one on the head before leaving though. Continuing past them and you'll see what appears to be tails. Black voids for eyes and a stream of black tears coming from them. We saw tails getting attacked in the beginning, but is this what became of him? Or is this something else entirely? There's nothing else over here to find, so head back the way you came. Once you've arrived where Sonic fell previously, you get stared at by the eyeless Sonic. This lasts for an uncomfortable amount of time before it jump scares you. The game cuts back to Sonic looking like he was about to fall. You're back to a mostly normal world. Now it's time to complete this level. Run towards the end right past the Chaos Emerald and you'll see Metal race by. This leads to the next stage, where you'll see something on the other side. It's Tails, or the thing that looks kind of like him. Before you can start racing towards the other side, Dr. Eggman and Metal show up. Metal knocks you all the way across the map. Before you can get back up, the evil Sonic nicknamed EYX by the community appears in a bush and attacks Eggman. He appears to rip his head off, but it's hard to tell with the static effect. This also turns off the game again. Launching it again, you'll be sent to a new level and you're playing as Tails this time. First he walks out with these bloody white eyes, before transitioning to regular Tails. It looks like you're in a cave, you can't actually run, and Tails looks beyond distraught. The body of Ray will pop up for a second. No eyes like we last saw him, but then he gets pulled down by something. The eyes of something can be seen behind Tails, and now he speed walks, still not quite running. Tails comes upon a trail of blood, and looking over, he sees EYX standing over the bloody remains of Tails. At least it looks like Tails. This only lasts for a second before EYX runs, as Tails and the screen bursts into glitchy flames. The game ends here with a preview of what looks to be an evil version of Amy Rose. And that's everything we have so far. Sonic Edible ROM is the final form of the EXE game. This is what can really be done with that original formula, especially when it's been taken to its max. The story here feels like it really wants you to be a player. This is not only an amazing artistic decision, but also a great way to get people involved. It's like we're living out a creepypasta, far more than the game just mentioning whatever name you have on file for your computer. The story's a bit hard to piece together with what we have, so I'd have to make a lot of assumptions. From what I gather, this is a haunted ROM of a Sonic game. 
similar in some ways to Sonic.exe, but this takes it a bit further. The entity haunting the ROM hack has decided the player is the last piece they need for their family. The entity wants to take every Sonic character, but they also want you. I don't know their exact reasoning. Something that the game does very well is break the fourth wall. You can see this multiple times, but the biggest one is with the messages in the top left corner. I mentioned it before, but let's take a look at Ray's scene again. Of course, you can see these words changing, but when the eyes show up, the words in the actual display window change. I'll be watching you from now on. I'm not sure who is talking here. It couldn't be Ray. We just saw him die. In the earlier section when you play as Tails, during those first few screen glitches, words appear at the top again. Leave. Run. He can see you. And he is coming. Again, I'm not sure who is warning us, but there it is again. Not only is this breaking the fourth wall, but it's once again making the player a character in the story. I also want to go back to that Knuckles scene from before. Knuckles is addressing us directly here. He wants us to know that they've been suffering because of us. I touched on it a bit before, but I think Knuckles is referring to us as the fans of creepypastas or just EXE games. For years we have played these games and they have suffered for it. In almost every creepypasta fan game, the characters are murdered, tortured, or otherwise maimed. Knuckles is telling us that, somehow, he is aware of all those other times they've been killed. Whether by the hands of EXE or some other entity. Knuckles is condemning the player, us, for watching this go down. We've enjoyed this, while he has had to suffer through it. And now he is not only saying that we deserve to feel their pain, but also this new entity is capable of inflicting it upon us. The world that Sonic Editable ROM is building is super engaging and interesting. It really makes you feel like it's a classic era creepypasta that you get to be a part of. You are that unnamed narrator that is experiencing the darker side of a game that you used to love as a kid. From the presentation to the execution, this game is almost perfect. Not only is it a creepypasta game, but it's also an ARG. It's a game that I cannot wait for them to continue. It is the perfect form that EXE games would inevitably lead to. This isn't just the best EXE game, it's also one of the best creepypasta games. And I haven't been this excited since the every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized was released on the internet. If you haven't had the chance to play this game for yourself yet, the link is down in the description. It's a wild ride and a fun one. Just be wary of the flashing lights. I can't wait to see where they go next with this game. As far as the established world of Sonic.exe, I think this is a step in the right direction. Taking the character that I think has plenty of promise, adding a little bit of analog horror, and dowsing it in creepypasta vibes, this is the game that grabs your attention. Like the creepypastas of the classic era, this game really wants you to feel it. Thanks everyone for watching the video. I have been wanting to talk about this game for a while, but had so many other projects to work on. I hope you all liked it, and I hope that I can do more videos like this one. I haven't had the chance yet to play so many of the horror fan games. I would like to make an entire series just discussing different fan projects. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters, Blow and O's and Aura Kingsley. Thank you everyone for watching, and hope to see you all in the next video.